guys, take two magnetic letters. So um, I hope you heard the intro all that we already went through, but basically um, it's Happy New Year's, right? And I'm hopping on here today to show you a few ideas of some things you can do with your magnetic letters. Now, you might have seen an earlier video that I did on magnetic letters where we did uh, letter sorts and we did beginning and ending sound and we did short vowels. Today is going to ante it up a little bit. Today we're going to be talking about blends and diagraphs and long vowels. And instead of just looking at sorts, looking at a group of letters and deciding which one doesn't belong. So let's go ahead and start there. So what I did was I made these little cards that had a series of letters. Now, I was intentional when I made the cards. I have them numbered up here in the corner and I have a cheat sheet that says, you know, number four is this. Uh, which letter doesn't belong, but we want to remember that the kids might come up with a different idea than we did, and as long as their idea makes sense, then of course we're going to go go with that too. All right, so what they do is they just get out the letters, and then they have to look at all the letters and decide which one doesn't belong. So let's see how good you are. Which one of these would you say didn't belong? Type, your, type the letter in the comments. Let's see who's the first one who can get this right, because sometimes they're tricky. So anybody guess? Anybody guess, Andy? I don't think so. All right, so here, of course, it is the L, because all of these are short letters, and L is the only tall letter. Now, you might have had a different way, like I said, and that would be just fine. Okay, so we did beginning sounds, um, but this time we're going to do beginning blends and diagrams. Now, you can always leave your cards like this, or if you want to be able to you know, easily pick which cards you want. You can also cut your cards apart like this. Now, I put the blank spaces at the beginning so the kids would know we were looking for the beginning blend or diagraph. So then they just put the letters cheese and crown and clover and chick to make those different um, beginning blends and diagraphs, okay? All right, now, we can also do that same thing with the ending sound. Now, to me, it was really easy for me to go through my clip art and find pictures for beginning blends and diagraphs. But when it came to finding ones for the ending blends and diagraphs, to be honest, I had a harder time. I wasn't quite sure what all the ending blends could be. So what I did was I just went online on, on Google. Aren't y'all proud of me? Because y'all know that I'm tech challenged just went online and I did a search for words. Then as I was reading through the words, I was just like, oh, I've got a clip art picture of that one. Let me go snag that one. So that's kind of an easy way. If you don't have a complete set of clip art that is just ending blends or ending diagraphs, how you can use the clip art that you already have in order to be able to do that. Okay. Now the next one we did uh, was working with word families. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give them a card that has all one word family. Then they're going to have to find the pictures that go in that family. So here we have to find the ache family. So we have rake, cake, and lake. Now you're going to want to give them some odd man out cards so they can't always just know um, the right one. And then they've got to do rake and cake and lake. Okay? Now, I am not worried about checking these, okay? These are not centers that I'm running over there to check. These are centers that I call can-dos, where these are some things that you can do. I'm not going to check them. I just want things over there that are going to keep them busy. But if I ever did want to check them, I got this idea from another teacher, was just to put a device down there, a phone, an iPad, something like that that the kids can just put their name card on the floor, take a picture of their work. You don't have to have a recording page for everything they do if you'll let them use your device to take a picture. Okay, so then we're going to go to spelling patterns, okay? Long vowel spelling patterns. Now, what I've got here is these are ones that all have the E, the, the e at the end, the CVC E words. So these are, to me, are easier than um, the CV. C, C, V, V, C words, okay? Now, so here they would make race, and then they would make face, if I can find my F. All right. Now, what are we going to do if they put an S on there? 
Well, we're going to get over it is what we're going to do, really, because that's not what we're working on here. Okay, if I was working on what when does C make S and when does C make K, then yeah, I'm going to worry about that. But what I'm working, worried about here is that spelling feature of the long vowel. So the kids are going to make the different words using those magnetic letters. Now, if you've seen my other magnetic letter activities, you're saying, well, these look very similar to those others. Absolutely. Why in the world would we want to create all new ideas? They can't be centers if we do that. They have to be small group activities because what we want kids to be able to do is go over there and say, oh, I know what to do with these because they've seen this kind of stuff before. Now, what is harder, of course, is when we get to the using the um, two vowels go walking and the first one does the talking when we get to using that spelling pattern, okay? But there again, what are we going to do if the kids do leaf, L-E-E-F? All right, well, let's do it that way. What are we going to do if they do that? Well, you have to decide, depending on what grade level, what you expect your kids to do. If my kids put two vowels together with the first vowel making the long sound, I'm going to know they understand that concept of two vowels in a word together. The first one makes the long sound, okay? Um, all right. Now, the next thing we have here is one of their favorites, and I love doing these with them. And this is a word ladder. So what we do is we start off with our first word, bike, okay? Then we have to come to our next word, bake. Now what we're gonna do is we're only gonna change one letter in the word. So here we're changing the I to an A, and we make the word bake, all right? Now we have to come to cake. So how do we get from bake to cake? We change the B to a C. And then we go to cane and cape. Each time, it's changing one letter. Now, the E is staying constant. It's staying the same. It's not going to ever change. But in the other words, eventually, I will change the first sound, the, the, the long vowel, and the ending sound. Okay, not the ending letter, but the ending sound will change as well. Okay? All right, so the last idea that I'm going to show you are these. Um, and I made these earlier. My kids have done these with two and three letter words, but these are three and four letter words. So these are, oh, these cards. Did y'all not see that? Okay. Okay, so here's what you can do. After you watch this um, video, I'm, I have a blog post that's almost ready. I want to put a link to the video in the blog post, so I'm going to go and do that, and then I'll post it. And it will have pictures of all this stuff so that you can go back and look at them um, again, okay? All right, so these are a little magnifying, just clip art. And what I did was, um, well, one thing I learned, first of all, is don't try to make this kind of stuff in Microsoft Word, because then your clip art is just jumping all over the page. It took me a long time, and Megan, my daughter, finally convinced me to move over to the PowerPoint, and now I can't imagine not using it. But I just inserted a table, put a clip art in each of the six boxes of the magnifying glass. Then I inserted a text box, and in that text box, I'm gonna type a word. Now, I'm gonna reduce the font size until, yeah, if I look at it really closely, I can still read it, okay? But Because if we get it too small, the kids aren't even gonna be able to see it with a magnifying glass. But then what the kids do is they take their magnifying glass, which is why they like this center, and they hold the magnifying glass over the word, and then they find that word, they find the letters to make that word. Now, this is a really great way to practice what we know about how children learn a word. So here's what, here's what we're trying to practice. When kids learn a word, how do they really learn a sight word? How do they learn that these letters represent the word the? Okay, so here's what we want. We're going to show them the word. Okay, so this works really great with this because they look at the magnifying glass and they look at the word. Then they lay the magnifying glass down and they make the word. Once they've made the word, they look at the, the word again with the magnifying glass. And they say, does my word match that word? If not, they push their magnetic letters back into the pile, look again, and then try to make the word again from the beginning. If we let kids do this, look, see an S, put an S, then look again with the magnifying glass and see the I and put an I, 
and then look with the magnifying glass again and see the T and put a T, they've never looked at the word as a chunk. They've not made the word sit. They've made S-I-T. So this is a great way to train the brain to look at the word as a chunk. Now I will tell you, the first times you try to do this, like if you show them a word and then have them write it on a magna doodle or a dry erase board, most of them are gonna get just the first letter, all right? Because you haven't trained their brain yet. So the more you practice this each time, making them start over from the beginning, then their brain will learn to chunk those letters together and see that word as a unit. That's why kids can read the word the and not know the letters T, H, and E, because they're looking at that configuration of symbols to represent a word, okay? So I'm gonna have these all, like I said, on my blog. Um, I'm gonna be back on here Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna show you, um, you know, I've done, where we've done our pattern blocks and we've done Unifix cubes. On Wednesday, I'm gonna show you a bunch of ideas to use with your colored tiles, okay? So y'all have a great evening and enjoy, if tomorrow you start school, enjoy your last night of freedom. And um, I, hope, I hope you have a great year. See y'all later, bye.